Welcome back. I'm Brett. This is Matt. We're here to talk to you about the Surface Duo 2. Today we're going to talk about Outlook. Uh, Outlook is obviously pretty important for most people. Email. We're still doing email. Matt, you're a big Outlook user too, yeah? Yes, I've been using Outlook obviously for a long time. And whilst we've moved to Teams, uh, we train people and using Outlook and how yep. they could get more from and it. Teams. Yep. And Teams, for that matter as yep. well. And what I find interesting is that people who didn't know how to manage an inbox also can't manage their Teams activity feed very well. So, True. you know, yeah. overwhelmed from one communication platform to another, the, the platform Just, doesn't solve the problem, does it, right? It's about the skills of the You can move the, the dumpster fire the over here, but it's yeah. still gonna be a dumpster fire, right? <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> uh, yeah. But in our Outlook training, one of the uh, parts of that that we get the most wow moments from is just showing people that you can open your calendar and your email inbox in two separate instances of Outlook. Yeah. You can open your tasks in a third instance of Outlook if you want to, and you yeah. can split them across your desktop, and you can be working uh, between your calendar and your emails together. Yeah. And so, I mean, Surface... how many times do you get that email go, hey, when can we meet? And you need to coordinate that information. Yeah, toggle between it, right? Uh, and for our executive assistants, our EAs or PAs that we see, they love this feature. A lot of them are already doing this. A lot of those people are typically very good Outlook users, but, but most people aren't good Outlook users. And uh, showing them how to open their calendar and emails together is a, is a life-changing event for them. Yep. And, and the Duo is naturally built for this. Yeah, with... exactly. I think it's one of the key use cases, right? I mean, yeah. it's a great example of what they call in the Surface Duo world an app pair, right? Where you can actually... Yes combine the calendar app, which is actually in, it's just a different facet of the Outlook app alongside the Inbox app. And you, you basically drag the, uh, the one icon on top of the other and turn it into an app pair. So every time you click on that app pair, it just launches both apps on this yeah, side by screens, side, right? Which is fantastic. Account. Inbox on the left for me, calendar on the right. Yeah. I will say that one of the features that I love in Outlook on the desktop with split screening and using both instances, you can actually drag an email into your calendar and turn it into an appointment, or you can drag it onto a task yeah. and assign yeah. that to someone. Or well, can't you do that on Duo, which I must admit yeah. frustrated me a little bit. Yeah, but we're going to talk a just... little bit about some ways around that, right? But um, yeah, yeah. You, it's interesting. It looks like the provision seems to be there. It just doesn't work yet. Like you can actually drag an email and over onto your calendar, but it doesn't do anything yet. So I wonder if that's a, a thing that's coming. Yeah, hopefully so, because it's, you know, I want to, you can hit obviously reply with a meeting to get people into yep. a meeting, but just to put it into your calendar straight away into clear space in your calendar and turn it into something is, as in turn it into time. So yep. the way I would describe this, I can turn an email into time by getting it into yep. my calendar. And, and most people, you know, when they, they would flag an email, a lot of people would flag an email as something yep. important to do. Um, but in my view, you've just taken it from your inbox list and put it in your flag list. There's still yep. a key element missing and that's time. Right. When are we so, going to do it? Right. When yeah. are we going to do it? So yeah. if, if you can become... It might be appropriate for some, some of those smaller tasks where you're going to bank them up and you know, just dedicate time to working through your to-do list. Um, but anything that's substantial, like a meeting, then you need to allocate time to it straight away, right? Yeah. So yeah. Get, getting that uh, integration between the two. But having said that, having them open side by side is, is really valuable and something I do all the time. Yep. Um, and the other thing, just thinking about like, the two screens and working together uh, that I've really loved about the Duo 2 is to have the calendar app and to have it spanned across two screens so that you can actually mm. get some perspective on your calendar. When we're using these, you know, very skinny, narrow phones, um, that's a terrible calendar experience, right? I mean, you can practically only see one or two days at a time. Um, but with the two screens side by side here on the Duo, um, I can really get a good view of the whole week and see what's going on in my calendar, which is great. Um, and the flip side of that is on the inbox that you can have the inbox spanned and you'll have your uh, message list on the left and you'll be able to see the, the, uh, the email on the right side as well. Yeah, so again, the things we can't do on our candy bar phones that, that are very, I mean, triaging email on the fly, right? It's probably the thing I yeah. did most other than scrolling social media. Yeah. So, you know, I'm doing less scrolling of social media, much more triaging of email in a much better way. Um, yeah. What I find with the two screens is it's easier for me to find context to the emails. You know, sometimes you go, oh, I can quickly respond to that, but you haven't properly read the context because you're reading like three lines on the candy yeah, bar so phone screen. So phone. Yeah. getting that broader perspective before I respond has helped, has saved me a lot of embarrassment. Yeah, yeah, it always does, right? And, and just having that three by two aspect, that wider screen, much, much wider than those odd and very skinny phones. Um, 
that's where this really reshines. It, it, it doesn't do great on a on Instagram or some social media app, but it does great in email, right? Yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's an interesting aspect of it. Um, now, there are a couple of ways to do those things we talked about before. We want to um, get an appointment from an email or turn an email into an appointment. So somebody's emailed you with a time and you want to turn it into an appointment. What you can do in Outlook currently is reply. Um, so you hit reply all and then you'll get an option that says uh, turn it into an event or um, something like that. So you can actually convert it there. So it's a bit odd and it's not very obvious that the way that works in Outlook, but it is possible to do that. So basically reply with a calendar appointment instead of just another email in the chain. Uh, so that's really handy. Um, and the other thing that you can do, you mentioned before um, flagging an email, um, you can set up the gestures. Swipe, so if you swipe yeah. left or right on an inbox item, and that's one of the first things I customize in Outlook uh, when I get it on a new device, um, what the gestures do. Um, so if I swipe left or right, I can't remember which one it is, but I have that flag an email. And that actually does, a, a flagged email in Outlook is actually a task, but there is another way to get to tasks in Outlook, which is to click the three dots in an email. So if you're seeing the preview of the email, you can click the three dots and actually um, one of the items there is to add it as a task to your Microsoft to-do app. So um, on Android and you know the way obviously Microsoft are moving with Outlook is the tasks element, which was very, very um, poorly used in Outlook mm. has moved into its own app, Microsoft to-do. The data still sits there in your Outlook uh, inbox, but um, having it in its own separate app is great because it's not full of distractions of communication. So if you want to create a task from an email, you can actually do that from within the app as well. And that's going to show up in the, the Microsoft to-do app. Yeah, that's a good workaround. Yeah, I really like that. Yep. All right. Um, oh, so one of the things that um, we think is really cool and interesting, but it's probably not really there yet, is, um, is being able to ink an email mm. on this device. So uh, I found this really hard to find, but when you create a new email, there is an icon um, down the bottom of the email on the toolbar. To me, it doesn't really look like a pen, but it is a pen. It's kind of hard to distinguish. Looks it's like just an A. The, yeah. yeah, looks, looks like, like an, an A. a. Looks, uh, I thought it was something to do with fonts or something like that, but it's uh, just next to the microphone icon there. And uh, that actually opens up basically an inking canvas on an email so that you could scribble a little note or a diagram or something like that and send it off to whoever else you want by email. So it's basically just going to embed a picture. Whatever you draw there is going to be a picture sent in an email. So it's really handy when you're on the go just to be able to send a quick note off by hand to somebody. Um, so that's yeah, an interesting feature. We get yeah. trapped, right, thinking about the formality of an email. Oh, I would never send a picture or a handwritten note to someone in an email. That's going to be formal. But yeah. why? It doesn't have to be, right? It's actually personal and yeah. probably gives a, gives a lot more uh, yeah. content back if you draw them a quick smiley face and a thank you or whatever you want to send them right so or and that really note. depends on context as well we've got to think about context like maybe you won't send that to uh, your, your boss or something your boss. like that but maybe you would for, to a colleague right so it just depends yeah. on the context and who you're emailing um, but really handy to be able to ink a quick email uh, the issues that i saw with the inking feature in outlook um, it doesn't ignore touch inputs, which we would expect most Office apps ignore touch inputs when you're using your pen. Yeah. Uh, your fingers draw on that, which is very frustrating. Um, and the controls are all sort of different to the way they are in apps like OneNote. Uh, yeah. It does really frustrate me that, that Microsoft keep in reinventing the wheel and every single app seems to have a different way of dealing with ink and pens. Um, come on, Office, just get it together just get and together. Just keep it consistent. Could not agree right? more. Yeah. Um, it, it is good that the feature's there, but it'd be great if it was much more consistent. So that extends into just in the office and the desktop as well. I know this is not the topic, but I'm going to mention it here anyway, right? You know, the yeah. pen does different things in Word than it does in Excel and it does in OneNote. It, it, it just, from an from yeah. adoption and training perspective, that, that's insanity that it does yeah. those things. Yeah. And, I'm, yeah, and I mean, I'm sure the telemetry at Microsoft reflects that it's not being, these features, these individual app-based features are not being used. Yeah. Um, it should, uh, Office is Office, consistent. it should work consistently. It should work the, consistently from Windows yeah. to Office. So there yeah. needs to be a broader conversation, not just amongst the Office team, but also to the yeah. Windows team to make sure yeah, that absolutely. the yeah, pen Windows experience is unified yeah. a, across uh, yeah. this range of things. Yeah, definitely you know, I get an area that Microsoft third party to apps, work on. Pens yeah. can do what they like in third-party apps, and you expect that. But across the Microsoft ecosystem, it, it, should across be the Microsoft ecosystem, it needs to be consistent. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, and, you know, in, in terms of that, like, obviously, you really don't, don't think that 
um, this is a note taking application, right? This is email. It's not about yeah. notes. One note still remains the application there. Whiteboard, obviously, for whiteboards and those sorts of things. This is just another tool that you have, uh, you know, from a, a pen and an ink perspective that is really important. But it's just good to know that it's there in, inside of Outlook as well. Yeah. So I've found Outlook um, on the Surface Duo 2 to be a, a really, really productive compared to Outlook on the, the candy bar skinny phone. Um, I think having the two screens, you know, being able to have the calendar alongside the inbox or just being able to, to span either one of those uh, across the two screens has been super handy. And it is really one of the sort of showcase app pairs um, that you can see on the Surface Duo 2. So if you haven't done that using Outlook, give it a try. Um, yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll be back next week. So make sure that you hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you get notifications about our next video, which will be on the Surface Duo 2 again.